Hi guys, good to be back with you again. Um, I thought we'd talk a little bit here about Lou Boudreau in 1949. Um, this is uh, not one of those um, unknown players, but it's kind of a little interesting bit of tidbits. Um, so uh, we're going to look here, I think, first actually at his uh, overview page. We'll take a look at that there. I've made it nice and large for you so you can see it right next to my wonderfully looking head. Um, Boudreau is so interesting because he had all of these straight all-star game performances. I mean, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Of course, in the Warriors, he's going to be up there. 46, he just misses it as everybody comes back. I would love to know the story behind that because at least for the overall season, he looked really, really good. 47 and 48, he was in the all-star game, got the MVP in 48 after just missing it in 47. Um, 45 doubles too, by the way. And then in 49, he doesn't go to the All-Star game, and that's kind of the beginning of the end for Lou Boudreau. Interesting stuff. Um, the thing that I was so uh, so uh, curious about, though, was why he was um, unavailable in the uh, second game of that doubleheader. And um, th this is going to be kind of hard for us to figure out, and the reason why is because I don't have access to any Cleveland newspapers. I know from talking with people that it's not newspapers.com. It's one of the competitors that offers this, but there's some report about it not being quite like as, as good or as useful as newspapers.com. It's not quite as easy to search or something to that effect, and so that can be a problem. Uh, the truth is here as we look at this that um, – uh, Boudreau, um, it, you know, it's hard to tell again without having the paper in front of me, but Boudreau was not really um, intending on playing the complete game, I think, here on May 30th. He ends up coming in in the 11th inning. It makes sense to me that he would not come in for the entire game of the 20, doubleheader for the 29th. Anyway, he's back into action on June 2nd, as you can see, but for whatever reason, he was out in the second game. It would take a little bit of research. We might be able to find something in the Sporting News or in one of the St. Louis newspapers. I'm not going to uh, trouble you too much with that here, other than to say that um, the uh, Indians had a big game there, another two uh, 12 inning games in a row. Um, and um, in this one, uh, they won this um, at the very end. Uh, Lou didn't have much to do with it. He pinch hit it for um, Ray Boone and then uh, just put himself in as a shortstop. He didn't have anything to do with this rally, but um, uh, the Indians almost won in the 11th. Man, the uh, Browns were uh, falling apart all over the place, and then in the 12th, they did finally win the game. So pretty interesting stuff. I'm not sure exactly what happened, if he was just tired or if there was some small injury, because whatever it was, it didn't last very long. Although I will say that um, so he goes from game 34 up to game 37 before he plays again, so he may have been out with sort of a day-to-day -day thing. Now, this is where newspapers are important um, because it's hard to figure out what happened. This is the Sabre bio, which, as you know, I like to look at all the time. We'll scroll back up here. Um, this is about the 1948 season. We won't worry about that too much. Um, and uh, when we uh, look down here, yeah, Boudreau did very well, and then he uh, helped win the World Series. He got a raise to 62000 a year from Bill Veck, um, but... He knew that the Indians, his time with the Indians was going to come to an end when they failed to win again in 1949. That's pretty rough. I mean, the Indians had a good team in 49. This is a team that was in third place. As you've seen, if you've been watching these games we've had here, like the Indians, at least um, in my uh, version of 1949, have a very good chance at winning the pennant. Can you imagine why you would, you know, not, uh, you know, hold on to the guy who's uh, taken this team and has done so well for you? I'm not so sure if it's uh, right that uh, Bill Veck um, is the one to blame, which is kind of what's insinuated here, right? Um, he thinks that maybe Hank Greenberg had more to do with that. I don't know too much about the relationship between Boudreaux and Greenberg, who I'm guessing was the GM and uh, Bill Veck. Um, Veck was distant with Boudreau in 1949, never having much to say to him. Lou playing all four infield positions, batted 284 with four homers and 60 RBIs. It just doesn't tell me much, right? And this is part of the problem that you run into where there's there's clearly some sort of story going on. There's clearly some sort of like back and forth that's happening. Again, I haven't taken the time to dig into the old sporting news. That takes quite a bit of time to get through. I haven't really had the um, energy to really dig into that and figure out exactly what's happening quite yet. Um, it would be interesting, though, to figure out exactly what's happening and sort of get a, a feel for what the problem was here, um, but uh, for whatever reason, um, Boudreau, despite having a good game or a good season, ends up uh, uh, not on the All Star team 
Um, and then in 1950, he plays his last season in Cleveland. And um, as soon as uh, Bill Veck is gone and Greenberg is put in charge, the Indians release Lou Boudreau. And um, it's kind of a uh, thank you, but what have you done for me lately type thing. Kind of a sad story when you think about it, right? Because, I mean, the Indians finally get a world's championship in 1948 and have a great team. It's a good team in 49. And then, you know, Boudreau, who was a big re- part of the reason for that, just sort of falls apart. I mean, well, I'll show you here, right? So we we take a look here at uh, the 1949 Indians. How are we going to get to them? Um, uh, we'll probably have to go back here to his overview page. Baseball reference always confuses me. We'll go over to the Cleveland Indians page. Yeah, they were 89 and 65 in third place in the American League. Um, eight games out by the end of the season. Um, had a run differential that was positive, which is good. They weren't really that far back, and they had the best defense in the majors, right? The offense, yeah, it probably, probably could have been better. That's probably where some of the problems were. But the pitching was just absolutely phenomenal, which is kind of what we've seen. So we go over here, uh, back to the uh, Windows side, away from Linux. Um, we go back and look at Diamond Mine Baseball here, where you can see, here's our famous blank screen, right? You can see here in uh, the game scheduled, what's happening in the replay is that the Indians have the um, almost the um, worst offense in terms of runs scored. Actually, the Browns are a little bit worse, but they have the best defense in terms of preventing runs in the American League, and that's the reason why they're still up in this pennant race. And um, I do think that the offense might get, get a little bit better as we go along. Um and the pitching is going to remain absolutely extraordinary. So that's one of those things I love to look at, love to, you know, get into the little trivia and stuff like that. We can take a look here too, by the way, and uh, just see what Diamond Mind says. I know this is going to be too small for you to see because that's just the way that it is. Um, we'll look at the real transaction log for um, players on an, in an organization, or I'm sorry, players on a roster for Cleveland Indians because you got to do this stuff. And uh, take a look. And yeah, Boudreau was listed as day to day um, between days of the doubleheader. It's cool that you can do that in Diamond Mine. And um, uh, we'll see when he comes back. He becomes healthy again on uh, June 2nd. And uh, that's it. Oh, no, it's in September where he ends up a little bit day to day for day to uh, day again. And um, it does sort of impact the Indians because um, they have um, another game on uh, the first against the Red Sox and then on the second. So um, we'll see what happens. That, by the way, is going to be a huge series. If you're interested in what's coming down the pipeline, that series between the Indians and Red Sox is going to be big. And if the Red Sox win that series, they might get out to a pretty strong lead. So we'll see what happens, just like the Giants did when they had their series against the Pirates um, a couple weeks ago. Anyway, there you go. Thought I'd get into uh, Lou Boudreau and a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes here. Just a little bit of curiosity. Um, Look at all of these teams, four teams in the American League with uh, 22 wins exactly. That's not going to last because some of these teams haven't played yet um, uh, in uh, this uh, uh, day in the simulation, right? We have to uh, see how the Yankees do in this doubleheader against Washington. I don't think they're going to lose both games, but it might happen, right? It's just interesting to see how uh, scrunched everything is in the middle. Anyway, I hope you have a good day. I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.